So before this video starts, I just thought I'd give a little bit of a backstory. Uh, what you see here is a pair of 1176 clones I bought off a good friend of mine 20 odd years ago. Um, it's done some sterling work. Um, and I've just bought another Neve channel strip. So I kind of have no other space. So the plan is, is to reduce this 3U-21176 down to, into a 2U box. Um, and that way I can fit in my new Neve channel strip. So here we got our G1176 pair of them. Uh, 3U always to me seemed to be a bit too big for its boots anyway. So um, this downsizing I think is going to be quite good. Um, the circuit itself isn't particularly high but what makes things complicated is the PCBs that are on the switches so I was up till five in the morning last night uh, measuring everything uh, making sure all the clearances were okay and I've came up with a design which I've actually uh, printed in reverse because I want to stick this into the front panel and you, uh, with the box that I bought, you can't buy these singly that easily that I know. So I have to get it right first time. Um, and but the first stage is I've got to join up my two prints because I've only got an A4 printer. So what I like to do is uh, kind of cut randomly. like that and I always like to get my tape ready okay I'm happy with that Okay, so now that fits in there like a glove. Um, I'll tape this down and then I can use my drill press. But the whole reason for doing this in the first place like this is I can actually physically check things like the VU meter and the clearances for the pots so um, on first glance everything's looking exactly as I would expect now you can see here I've taken all the components out of the front panel uh, this is so I could take as accurate measurements of the PCB sizes this is what's going to give you all your clearance problems um, and I think when I'm ready everything will come out like this and I shall just bring the whole lot out as a whole I shall have to uh, desolder these so that I can take the XLRs out and then the other thing is we then we have to try and mark where we're going to mount the PCBs um, and drill holes in the case. Um, hopefully straight swap. So the first thing that we do is we um, use a little hole punch that uh, marks the centres and I'll use my smallest drill to um, do all the holes and then gradually we'll work up the sizes uh, to the correct size and there will be a couple of um, holes which will need bigger drill bits than my bench press can take which we'll see in a second so this is the biggest one and now I have to switch to a hand drill for a slightly bigger drill bit and 
And then when we're happy with that, I use the really big drill bit to do all the bigger holes. Okay, that's the really big holes. And then we'll do a uh, deburring just to make sure there's nothing poking up from either side. And now it's time for the Dremel to cut out the squares. I like to do a bit at a time. And eventually you can just finish off the last bits. And then it'll pop out. A nice file. And then it's onto the back panel where we have the XLR inputs and outputs for both channels. And we also have a square for the power socket. So I'll try to do that first, as it's the hardest. And then center punch all the holes. I'll go in with again the smallest drill bit. And work my way up. And then obviously the big center ones. Oh, a bit more deburring. And then we can attack the really big holes. I'm drilling into wood here because it just makes it easier. Although they still get stuck. And then we quickly label the inputs and outputs. And take out the XLRs. And then we can move everything all in one go and hope nothing too much gets disconnected. And there we go. And now I use a piece of paper to transfer the original holes into the new case. Just using a felt tip and then a centre punch again just to give us a bit of accuracy when we start drilling. And I'm going in with the hand drill straight away here. Okay, great. Now it's time to add in the standoffs after a bit more deburring. And the standoffs are in. Now we can put the rest of the circuit back into the new case. And everything seems to be going very smoothly. Here's some decals, which I thought I'd put on the front panel, just to sort of see how things looked. And to be perfectly honest, this is pretty much giving it a complete and utter service because I'm checking all the connections to all the switches as we go along. So it's like the ultimate overhaul. And periodically you will see me checking my phone, just making sure I've got all the colours in the right order. It's very important that you take photographs as you go along, especially if something as complicated as a front panel as this. But it all seems to be fitting together very nicely. Great, everything's now in the 2U box. Um, there's only been a few a couple of changes, I'll just show you. I had to make the hole bigger because I wanted to fit this um, fancy pants mains filter input. Um, originally, it just had a bog standard um, IC input like this. So I took the 250 milliamp fuse out of there and put it into the new filter box. Um, the other thing was I decided Normally the power would run 
from the IC input to the front panel and then back again. Um, so I've decided to remove the switch from the front panel. There's still a switch on the back now. Um, but in my studio, I have dedicated power switches um, for all the equipment. Anyway, it's not like a full studio on-off situation. The other thing was the um, I wasn't happy mounting these um, power transistors on this perforated um, panel here because you're obviously not going to get much surface contact to dissipate the heat. So instead, I pulled it a bit forward and added a couple of heat sinks on there instead. The decals I put on the front. Um, through the building process have already um, started peeling off so but there was only as a guide to, so I could see what was going on because I've actually had printed some nice um, vinyl stickers so um, we're gonna have to take everything off the front panel again to take the front panel apart try and get the stickers on um, I've printed these with um, places where you can mark your own um, holes if you for future uh, bills of 1176s. I've got a friend who his unit is kind of in a mirrored style from left to right, which is really confusing. Um, I have a few more that we can um, see if we can update. But the story doesn't end there. Now, originally I thought this was a Giraffe 1176. Um, but his designs on his website uh, doesn't have the um, input transformers. Sorry, these these ones here, and it has uh, IC line drivers for that instead. And as far as I can tell, now we're going back through twenty years of a single thread for each different build. Um, I can't claim to have read through the whole thing. And then a guy called Mnats came along later, and these OEP um, transformers, uh, A262A2Es, which were used on the outputs, and I think the three Es could be used on the inputs as well, um, became very popular in a certain era. And a lot of people who had these output transformers in the unit said they loved the sound of it, um, but it turns out that the output resistor, which goes across the output windings, which is a 1K for the Lundels, um, ha makes an impact on the frequency response of these transformers. Whilst we're here, I thought I might as well order an, a new set of LL5402s, which were originally designed by the um, Jiraf version to have, but I thought it would be fun. I'll take this resistor out, put my decade resistor box on there, and see if we can measure the frequency response and uh, just by altering this resistor. So, before I start, I just thought I'd take an initial reading um, as is. Okay, so I've just soldered to uh, the same two pins that are going to the meter, and we can see the same type of frequency response. So we, we're set at 1K. Um, if I turn this dial, we'll go to 1.1K, and we'll see what happens. And instantly you can see more top end coming. 1.3K, 1.4K. 1.5k, 1.6, 7, 8, 9. It's looking pretty flat. Um, let's go to 2k. So go back to 1 and then go to 2k. It's looking pretty good to me. Uh, well, 2.1k. Now we're starting to experience a top end boost. But that's quite high 
in the sort of in the region of 17k onwards. So I know I would personally would swap that for a 2k resistor. Now we can play with this live. Let's see if I can um, put some audio through it. So I've got a quick demo here where I've subgrouped all the drums into a mono auxiliary and now that is being fed through the um, 1176 clone. that's all gone back together and everything working is actually better than it ever has done i think taking it apart and i've cleaned all the contacts and um replacing the transistors that are in holders is going to hopefully give it another 20 years life now the only thing i didn't do and i don't think i'm going to do at the moment is i do have um a pair of utc 012s which are the original transformers for the 1176. However, there's nothing wrong with these Londles. I've already changed the output transformers. I'm going to live with it for a little while, get used to the sound. And then maybe I might make another video where I'll stick the um, original transformers in soon, see if that makes any difference. Okay, let's get it back in the rack. And here is the output response with the new Londles. Uh, I have to say, I'm actually quite surprised at how extreme um, we have here. Um, this is 10k up to 20k. It's quite an extreme boost. And we also have a bottom boost as well, which the uh, OEPs did not have at all. So maybe there is a bit more scope to add a bit more top end to those OEPs.